We've all heard the saying, win the morning and you'll win the day. Well, there must be something to it because top longevity experts swear by their morning routines as a way to improve their overall well-being and extend their lives. Welcome to Longevity Brief, brought to you by House of Longevity. Now, let's get into it. Waking up early and jump-starting your day can lower stress levels, boost productivity, and improve biological health markers. Let's see how some of the most influential longevity experts start their days. Dr. Peter Atia, host of The Drive podcast and author of the longevity book Outlive, gets up before the sun and eases into his day. Here's what his morning looks like. We know that successful people have a morning routine, a set of practice rituals that they do um, in a few minutes. I mean, what, what do you think is unique about your morning routine and what do you really do that uh, sets you up for success for that day? I. So I like to get up early, um, and first thing I want to do is sort of uh, meditate. Um, so I use one of two apps very commonly, 10% Happier and Waking Up, which is Sam Harris's app and Dan Harris, no relation. That is funny. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so I love, those, I love those apps, and I usually like to do a lesson and a meditation together. Hmm. So, you know, you'll listen to a lesson, which, will, which in many ways sort of gets you ready to think about this you know, the day a little bit and then, and then do a meditation. Um, I love to make coffee. So, um, I like my wife likes it. If I make her coffee, there's not much I can do to, uh, to, to improve her life, but making a, a really good French press is something I like to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and then usually I, I'm trying to limit email checks to twice a day. Mm-hmm. Um, as I describe it as my effort to avoid becoming the least productive human on the planet. So I usually do a big batch of morning emails while I wait for kids to wake up. And then I kind of just want to play with the kids as much as possible. And then once they go to school is usually when I work out. Hmm. So that, I think that part of my day is generally pretty much the same all the time. And then after that workout, then obviously the day can go in any different direction. Dr. Andrew Huberman is an associate professor of neurobiology and host of the Huberman Lab podcast. His focus has been on optimizing brain function, which is obvious when you see what his morning routine consists of. What does your morning routine look like at the moment? Morning routine is wake up. If I... Round about what, round about what time? Uh, I'm waking up these days around 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m. I'm trying to go to sleep by about 10.30 p.m. Sometimes it's 11, sometimes it's 10. Um, but when I wake up, I make a beeline for sunlight. Uh, so I'm going to get sunlight in my eyes for the, you know, I'll probably go into the grave saying this. So forgive me if people have heard me say this before, but the single best thing you can do for your sleep, your energy, your mood, your wakefulness, your metabolism (laughs) is to get natural light in your eyes early in the day. Don't wear sunglasses to do it. It takes about 10 minutes or so. Um, if you live in a cloudy area, if you're in the UK in the winter, yes, or the summer or the summer, maybe you resort to some artificial light as a replacement, but as much as one can get bright, natural, and if not natural, artificial light in your eyes early in the day without sunglasses, this sets in motion a huge number of different neurobiological and, and hormonal cascades that are good for you, reduces stress late at night, offsets cortisol, a million different things really that are good for you. So I get that. So I, I get sunlight. I hydrate, I drink water, and then yerba mate is my favorite form of coffee, uh, excuse me, caffeine. Are you waiting, how long are you waiting for 90 waiting? to 120 minutes. Are you doing any salts during that time? Are you taking any electrolytes in? I, I am a fan of water with element. Yep. Before I had element packets, I would just take a little bit of, of sea salt. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's just the best way, that cold glass of water and that first thing in the morning. It's just such a good way to start the day. So, okay, we've got... Um, 90 minutes deep. What have you been doing in that? You've had your light in the eyes. What have you been doing between that and the yerba mate in 90 minutes? I do everything I can to not do email, not do social media, and to take care of a few critical tasks. These days, I have this obsession with trying to do one cognitively hard thing a day, one, and one physically hard thing a day. I try and get my brain into kind of a linear mode. I try and narrow that aperture. So if I don't, the distraction that's created by social media and interactions with others can kind of wick out into the rest of the day. So I'm not necessarily trying to finish something in that time, but I try and do something challenging. Then I do caffeine about um, 90 to 120 minutes um, after waking. And even though I prefer to work out earlier, 
I generally will then do some sort of physical workout. I have a very consistent routine. I've done it for 30 years where I weight train for 45 or minutes to an hour every other day. And occasionally I take an extra day off mm. and occasionally due to travel or other commitments, I'll occasionally double up two days and then take two days off. Yep. So yep. I'm, on the off days, I'm doing cardio. And you're taking yourself up until what's that? Probably maybe 10, 30, 11 a.m., something like that. Now? Yeah. And then I'll eat my first real meal. Dr. David Sinclair has been a pioneer in the longevity research space for the past two decades. His book Lifespan was an international bestseller, and he has been credited with popularizing anti-aging supplements resveratrol and NMN. Here's how his morning unfolds. Oh, can you just get, run us through a day in the life of you? What time do you wake up in the morning? What's your first meal? Like, tell us what play by play what you do and I'm going to emulate it as best I can. Uh, I'm just curious. You've given us some good stuff, okay. but. All right. Well, what time do you wake up? Not, not every day is perfect. Put it that way. Uh, so I would wake up uh, between 6.30 and 7.30. Um, I do emails for about half an hour while in bed. Uh, texts. Um, I get up. I will. Uh, Obviously, I'll, I'll shower and all that stuff, but then I'll I'll start my meetings usually around eight. Uh, these are Zoom meetings. I don't have breakfast. I will have a cup of tea or a coffee. Um, I typically also have time to go up and get uh, uh, a spoonful of yogurt with dissolved resveratrol in it. I just mix it up. That or olive oil. I'm, I'm trying olive oil these days. Um, so I've had a tiny bit of, of food, not not a lot. And I'll, I'll just go through, you know, it's pretty busy, as, as you know, when I joined you today, I'm going from meeting to meeting, I'm al already late for my next meeting. Um, so the, I pack it in. Here's a bonus for you. David Goggins isn't a longevity expert, but I won't be surprised if he outlives all of us just through sheer grit. The focus and intensity Goggins puts into everything is something to marvel at. Here's what he does each morning. What does a morning look like for you at the moment? Have you got a routine of some kind? Yes, I run every single morning. So that's what time the, are you up? When are you waking up? I'm up about five, five thirty. So every morning starts with a run, and that's because that's the one thing I hate to do more than anything in the world. So that's like my cup of coffee, and I'm all about armoring yourself. So the second you leave your house, and the second you open your phone, the second you do any of that you are now letting in poison and cancer. So I make sure a lot of things you can't avoid. So as I get up, I start to armor plate my mind and body. Like a person's going to war, you put your body armor on. That's what I'm doing on that run. I'm waking up and I'm giving myself all this armor. So when I come out in the world, and I look at that phone, I'm ready. I'm not waking up late. I'm not rushing around. I'm not disorganized because I know I'm going to get hit in the mouth. There's a, there's an art to getting hit in the mouth. And that is why these things are important. You have to wake up and you have to give yourself belief. You have to give yourself confidence. So that, it starts with that run. So after the run, I come home, I eat something small. How long is the run typically the, at the moment? Nowhere under 12 miles. So, that's so you're that. fasted on the morning. Yes. Oops. Straight out. Straight out. 90 minutes to two hours of running. Back. Yep. Eat. Eat. And I'm in the gym. So, and then after that, um, to whatever's on the plan for the day. How long's the gym session? Depends. 45 to an hour and a half. Okay. Mm -hmm. You cycle as well? Yeah. How long are you cycling? It just depends. I do stationary bike right now a lot. At least three or four days a week, I'll do that. While my morning routine isn't as intense as Goggins, I always include collagen in my coffee, along with hyaluronic acid, NMN, and creatine monohydrate from donotage.org, along with a liter of water and some sun in my eyes. Click the link below and use coupon code STARK to get 10% off every purchase of the best supplements available. So that's what the experts do to start their days. Do you have a morning routine that works for you? If so, describe it in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. And check out these videos next.